Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and today we are going to be going through my surprising and disappointing reads of 2021. Number one, there's a lot of things. <laughs> Number one, if you hear construction work going on, no you don't. I'm very annoyed by it because it has been going on for like months and the end is not in sight. So that's very irritating. And then number two, my up laptop has been updating for like the past half an hour. It is still on 0%. Oh, it's on now on 1%. And so it sounds like it's about to take off any second. It's a great day so far. <laughs> I'm pretty sure everyone knows the concept of surprising and disappointing. <laughs> and so I usually just combine the two because there's usually not a lot that I'm like, oh, I was really, really disappointed in this. So I have five disappointments, five surprises. Do one disappointment, one surprise, one disappointment. Just to, you know, to mix it up. We don't want it to be all sad and then all happy, you know? Also, I try not to have too much crossover between like surprises and favorites of the year. Disappointments and like least favorites of the year. I think there's one or two things that are going to be on like my least favorites that are here. Uh, but I tried to avoid that as much as possible so there's not a load of repeating. And one last thing is that these are in no particular order. Like the first one I show you is not the least disappointing or the most disappointing. I'm just picking them up. Well, the first disappointment I'm going to talk about is Small Favors by Erin A. Craig. I have her other book up there, which is A House of Salt and Sorrow, and I absolutely adored that book. I really, really loved it. It wasn't anything incredible, but I think the time of year I was reading it around Halloween, the atmosphere, the creepy like ocean setting all of the sisters just dying all of this i ate it up i read it so quickly i just loved it there was a couple of elements of it that weren't my favorite the kind of romantic plot and all of that but overall i really really loved that book and when she said she was bringing out another ya horror i was like yay i was so damn excited and it was on my most anticipated releases of 2021 and i gave it two stars <laughs> So yeah, that wasn't a great result. I, yeah, I just, I have a whole vlog where I read this, Small Spaces by Catherine Arden, Small Favors and My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. And I gave this two stars. I just did not enjoy it whatsoever. It was so boring to me. Like, why is it this long? <laughs> like the first, I think about the first 100 pages, if you like watch that vlog, I say somewhere in it, I'm like, I have a feeling this is gonna be a four stars. I'm not really getting five star feelings. But I'm really enjoying it so far. I like the atmosphere, the creepy like forest setting. I was enjoying it. And then the next like 200 pages happened and nothing happened in them. I'm like, I would get over nothing happening if it's maybe, you know, building those character relationships and building my feelings towards them, making them more interesting, developing them. But that didn't even happen. I hated the characters. I hated the romance. Why does she insist on putting a romance in every single one of her books? I don't get it whatsoever. I was so disappointed. And then right at the end, it got interesting again. But like even the ending wasn't even satisfying. Yeah, so this was a huge disappointment to me. I really thought I was going to love it because I really loved her other book and it just completely let me down. So then my first surprise that I'm going to talk about, I'm gonna slightly related to like horror, I'll go with a mystery that I read, which was The Guest List by Lucy Foley. I adored this. I gave it four stars in the end. I think in the blog, again, I did another blog, it was reading mystery thrillers and I gave it five stars initially, but then I ended up dropping it down because I did have a couple of issues with it. But overall, what a pleasant surprise. I have not read a lot of mysteries or thrillers and I just ate this up. <laughs> the guest list, it follows a wedding on the coast of Ireland. We follow kind of different timelines and different points of views. And so we kind of follow the day before when everyone is arriving and we are finding out things along the way. And then we flash forward to the present sometimes and something has happened. We don't know what, we don't know who it has happened to. I did not see the ending coming whatsoever, but it made complete sense. There's a couple of smaller reveals that I did guess and even then I really enjoyed those reveals because they again they made sense and I felt so smart <laughs> figuring them out. There was also another small reveal that I didn't get either so I got a good few like of the smaller reveals but there was one small reveal that I didn't get and that really shocked me and then there were like the big reveal at the end I also didn't get that. And yeah I loved it and it totally made sense what happened and I just, I had a really good time. I absolutely blasted through it. The way it is written, it does make you kind of keep wanting to turn the pages. And I thought the characters were fascinating. They, most of them are horrible people. And, but you can't stop reading about them. 
and they were so well developed and some of them you wanted to punch in the face. And for my next disappointment, we'll stick with anticipated releases of the year. Mr. Impossible by Maggie Stiefvater. Oh, I did not like this. <laughs> Again, another two star read for me. So this is the second book in the Dreamers trilogy, which follows Rowan and Lynch from the Raven Boys. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Also, the construction has just gotten so much louder. I love The Raven Cycle. It is one of my favorite series. It is just so atmospheric and the friendships and the characters, I adore them. This, however, I hate it. I didn't even mind the first one. I think I gave it four stars. It was a low four star, but I gave it a four stars anyway. And I was really excited to see where she would go with it. And because she's kind of leaning into a different thing, you know, more action and less whimsy. I don't get it. <laughs> I feel like she's taking back stuff that we have learned along the way about this magic system and just being like, yeah, no, that's actually not how this is. And then this was complete middle book syndrome. Not a single thing happened here that wasn't build up to the third book. I'm going to read the third book, but this was such a disappointment and I'm I don't have high hopes for the third one, to be honest. Yeah, I don't care about the characters. I did used to like Ronan. Not anymore. I couldn't care less about him. I don't mind Jordan and Declan's kind of point of view. I didn't mind it, but I also, it wasn't that interesting either. It just felt very plotless. I feel like she had this idea for like a Ronin trilogy and she had like where she wanted to go. And so she wrote out the first book and then she realized, oh, I don't know what to do in a second book. And so it just felt like nothing happened. Nothing happened, everything happened, and I did not like it. <laughs> so yeah, what a big disappointment. Again, another two star read that was really anticipated by me. So that's unfortunate. So for the next surprise, I think we'll stick with the YA fantasy. And so for this, I'm going to talk about the Gilded Ones, which I'm not going to talk about it too long because I've only actually spoken about it really recently on my channel. And I was so surprised by this. And I think it also comes from the fact that I was reading just a lot of three star reads for that vlog. And so then this came along and I was like, this is really good. This is a really good solid YA fantasy. And so I was, I was so happy. And, and yeah, so the Gilded Ones, it follows this village and every young woman goes under a purity ritual. And if they bleed red, then they are pure. And our main character bleeds gold. And so just before she is about to be killed, she gets taken away uh, to join like the emperor's army. And I, just enjoyed it. This had surprise after surprise for it because within the first 40 pages you were finding out stuff that they did not tell you in the synopsis and I I loved it. I loved being surprised like that. The magic system was fascinating. The characters and their relationships were so sweet. There is a bit of a romance but like the friendship and how they all bond together over their shared experiences being unpure. <laughs> how they all bond together is just so beautiful and I just I thoroughly enjoy it and it is such a solid YA fantasy. I do admit that there was a bit of a plot hole, I think, at the end of the book, but I think maybe in the second book that could be actually explained away. So I'm hoping for that. I'm not sure will I actually pick up the second book because I feel like it left off at a very good point. Might wait and see what people think. But yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was such a good read. So we'll stick with the YA Goodreads video for now and the next disappointment was actually These Violent Delights by Koi Gong and this one I I feel really bad for not liking it because everyone likes it <laughs> and I just do not and yeah it was a pretty big disappointment for me I gave it three stars it was very almost a two star it was so close to being a two stars but it did get into the three so it was okay the only redeeming factor in this book was the plot and even then the plot wasn't that good to make up for the all of the bits that I disliked. I think it kind of leans more into a mystery than a fantasy and it follows Oma and Juliet. It's obviously a Romeo and Juliet retelling set in 1920 Shanghai and they are both part of different gangs and there is a madness spreading which is making people want to rip out their throats. The mystery element I did enjoy, trying to figure out who it was, going to all of these places to try and find all of this stuff. But everything else I just did not care. The reveal was so predictable and I <laughs> did not like it. It dragged in the middle. I feel like at least 50 pages could have been cut out of there because it was just like walking from place to place. 
uh, it had that thing of, oh, something happened in the past, but we don't know, but they're gonna keep bringing it up every second page uh, to make sure that we know that something happened in the past. And it's like, I get it, something happened in the past, but also I don't care because I don't care about the angst between you because I think both of you are just super boring, flat, cringy characters. I'll leave the Goodreads video where you can get my full thoughts on it, but I did not really enjoy it much. That book, particularly from like the YA video, really cemented that like YA, not really my thing. There are of course surprises like the Gilded ones, but in general, not really my main thing anymore. We'll keep talking about some YA fantasy for a while for a surprising one. See, I told you, I'm not completely going off YA fantasy because there's a lot of surpri nice surprises I had. And I'm going to talk about The Never Tilting World by Rin Chapeco, which I don't own. I need to own these books. I need to buy the two of them. <laughs> and because the thing is, I own The Bone Witch and I haven't read that yet. So I need to own the two of them because I adore them. I gave both of them five stars. Do I actually think that compared to like some of my other five stars of the year, like, you know, like Robin Hobb and S.A. Chakraborty and all of that, do I think they're like the same level of like complex and all of this? No, but they were so much fun. And I read them right at the right time because I was feeling kind of slumpy and I put on the audiobook. I powered through like both of them in like a weekend. It was so much fun. So this world follows two sisters and they don't actually know that they are sisters and they don't know the other one actually exists at all because the previous generation caused the world to stop moving and so each of their sides of the world are kind of falling apart so one of them is really like icy and the weather is out of control in both parts and then the other is like desert they're running out of water all of this and both of them completely separate to each other go decide i'm gonna fix this and so they make their way to the center of the world basically to try and fix it and as i said it was so good i really really enjoyed it it had a lot of tropes like at one point there was the one only one bed trope and you know what i ate it up i ate it <laughs> like if you love ya fantasy i totally recommend this series and it also it has a sapphic relationship in there as well and it also has another relationship which is also adorable both of the relationships are absolutely adorable which again that's another really YA thing everyone has to end up with someone and you know what I'm not mad about it it is very tropey at times but the way Rinch Peko worked with the tropes I really really enjoyed it I loved the magic system and I loved the sisterly relationship that is explored and yeah um and yeah so if you love YA fantasy I totally recommend this because it is so underrated and if you don't love YA fantasy but maybe you're in a slump or you kind of need something to break up like your heavier adult fantasy or something like that I totally recommend this as a nice little break getaway it is so much fun and also I will point out that there is consequences to their actions which does not often happen in YA fantasy and so I appreciated that so then the next disappointment I'm going to talk about is A Sky Beyond the Storm by Sabatier. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars and I think the reason why this is such a disappointment because I wouldn't usually think of it as because I mean I gave the first book a 4, the second book a 3, the third book a 4, and the fourth book a 3. And so like with like my previous track record normally I wouldn't consider a 3 star a disappointing rating but this one was on its way to being like one of the best ones. I still think the first one is my favorite but this one was so close to like getting up at that level it was like at least at like reapers level and then the final battle happened and I actually hated it I would have given that part of the book two stars and so it just like completely brought down the rating to like a mid three star and yeah it just it was a real letdown because I was really really enjoying it and then it just it just went downhill. This is the fourth book in the Ember and the Ashes Quartet and the first book follows Leia who uh, goes undercover as a slave at this school and Elias is one of the students there and he wants to escape from there and obviously their paths cross and they end up working together. I was enjoying how the fourth book was going. It was a bit slow, there wasn't too much happening but there was enough action to keep you interested as well as a lot of like really nice character moments. I was finally getting a bit more of the magic system which by the end 
we still didn't get a fully explained magic system, which I don't always need a fully explained magic system. But this series needed a fully explained magic system. And then, as I said, the final battle happened and it just, I did not like it. It was so rushed, unnecessary things were happening. It was so predictable. And then it tried to make this character who we have hated from the first book, all of a sudden have some depth, which it's way too late at this point in the series to try and give a character depth. And that is one of the issues I've had the whole way through the series is that it is like good versus bad. There is no nuance to any character except for Helene. I enjoyed the political scheming. I enjoyed the first however much, the characters, all of that. But that final battle absolutely ruined the book for me. So then the next surprise that I'm going to talk about is like, it's kind of hard to talk about this surprise because it was such a nice surprise. And then the third book I am not enjoying, I have been 11% in for the past like six months. <laughs> that is The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell. So I read this back April, I think. It was my first five star read of the year. And I absolutely, I had such a good time with it. And then I read the second book and I gave it four stars. Oh, it's a bit of middle book, that's okay. The third book was getting released. I was really excited. I had the audiobook ready, that got released. I've been stuck on 11% for the past however long. So it's really complicated to talk about this because it started off so strong and I'm currently not enjoying it. But I'm gonna give the third book another chance when I'm more in the mood for it because I just, I love the first book so much. I cannot give up on it. It gets compared a lot to Six of Crows and I can kind of see it. They're both like heist stories and all of that, which Six of Crows did not invent the heist, okay? And I think if you want an actual like better plot heist I would recommend The Last Magician but if you want better characters then Six of Crows. In this world there are magicians, mages, I can't remember what they're called anymore. I think it's mages is what they go by. No it isn't. Either way there's people with magic and they can and they all have different abilities and so our main character Esta has the ability to control time and so she is keeps going back in time to get these different objects for her professor. <laughs> and a mentor figure and she so she keeps going back and forth in time so then her biggest task of all is to get this magical book before it gets destroyed. I, I really enjoy that. I loved Esther as a character. She was really strong and fierce and it was so funny seeing her back in the past in the early 1900s when she is so used to being in the future and so she like sometimes she does some very <laughs> modern things and everyone's like what? <laughs> And so she's really entertaining. And then Hart, I didn't, I grew to love his character as well. The side characters though are incredible. The side characters are so good. There was some plot twists in here that I did not see coming. There was one that I did, but there was one that I did not. And I loved that. I think the time travel aspect is really cool and is done in a very unique way. And as I said, I feel like the plot is like a really good heist plot because I don't like when in Six of Crows. I'm, I, I know not all heist books are, but in Six of Crows, Kaz always has a backup plan. He's always like 300 steps ahead. And it's like, oh, this bad thing happened. Haha, -ha, that was all part of the plan. And that actually kind of gets on my nerves. And I love Six of Crows, I would just like to say. But in this book, so we see the plan, we get the full plan. And then, of course, it's a heist book, things go wrong, but they don't have a magic solution. They actually have to think on their feet they're like okay well i'll just freeze time for a minute and we can discuss <laughs> and i really enjoy that aspect of it because i felt like it was much more planned out and i enjoy that my final disappointment which again this is so stupid to put on here because it is a four star read that i really really enjoyed and that is the hero of ages by brandon sanderson i have spoken about this multiple times i always say the same disclaimer i really enjoy this book but i have a lot of negative feelings about it so because I only I only seem to remember the bad things about it and not the good things and so it makes me have very negative feelings despite the fact I know I remember really enjoying the experience of reading it but I did not enjoy how this went. <laughs> it is the third book in the Mistborn trilogy which follows a band of people who come together to try and take down the Dark Lord and in this book it is the 
it, so obviously as I said it is the finale it's not that hard to predict the big plot twist it's not that hard guys <laughs> And I don't know why so many people were convincing me. It is such a brilliant ending. You will not see it coming. It will make you cry. It will make you die. And it is the best finale ever. And I'm like, no. It is a good finale. It is solid. But I did not love it. Because the second book was all set up for this. And so I was like, okay, we're going to get into the third book. And it's going to be so fast paced. And we're gonna be like action scenes and it's gonna be so interesting <laughs> and then it was like that much more build up why do you need that much build up dude you do not need that much build up <laughs> unpopular opinion perhaps <laughs> so yeah um a little bit of a letdown i'm not gonna lie to you but also i gave it a four stars i really enjoyed it i really liked the characters i did overall like the plot and where the story went I like, again, I always like when things have consequences, which is most certainly true in this book. And so I overall, I really had a good time, but I'm a little mad and a little salty. One final book to talk about, and this is probably going to make it into the favorites, so I won't talk about it too long. And that is The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. This was such, such a big surprise because it is a novel in verse. It is very short. It is a contemporary, it is YA, and I loved it. I adored it. It made me tear up. It was so beautiful. It is, as I said, it is a book to inverse and it follows a teenager who has a lot of questions about herself, her religion, all of this, and she doesn't really have a good way to get it out. And so she starts going to like a slam poetry meeting after school and she finds out that she's really good at it and yeah and so it's just her exploring all the troubles of being a teen through poetry and i i really 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 enjoy it and i was so surprised because i read elizabeth acevedo's only book so far written in prose which is with the fire on the high and i really enjoy that i think i gave it a four out of five stars and i had been putting off reading anything in verse because i always hated poetry and I read this and I, I really, really enjoyed it. I squeezed it in because I was finished. There was sprints on for, I think it was for whatever a thon. And I had finished my TBR and I was like, is there anything else I can like quickly blast through? And I saw the, the audiobook for The Poet X and I had been waiting for the audiobook to see if it was ever going to be put on script because I, was, I knew I wouldn't enjoy it if I read it physically. And it is narrated by Elizabeth Acevedo and she obviously knows how it's supposed to be read. And, and yeah, and I saw it there, it was like three hours long. And so I listened up through time speed, I always do. And I put the ebook on along with it and I absolutely flew through it. And as I said, I just absolutely loved the experience. It was so, so good. So yeah, um, a really, really nice surprise. So those are all of the disappointments and surprises that I had in 2021. Tell me down below, what was one of your surprising or disappointing reads? So thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, subscribe. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.